It's time for another edition of the Obscure Window Manager Project. Today, I'm going to take a look at Awesome Window Manager. Let's find out if Awesome is really awesome. Okay, so today I'm going to take a look at Awesome Window Manager. This is Window Manager number 7 in my list of 11 obscure window managers I was going to take a look at as part of this series. I've already covered FVWM, uh, Openbox, JWM, TWM, Futile, and Xmonad. Today I'm taking a look at Awesome Window Manager in future videos in this series. I need to still cover Fluxbox, i3, Herbs Luft WM, and the Ice Window Manager. But again, that's in the future. Today we're going to take a look at the Awesome Window Manager. So today I'm running, this is actually Manjaro that I have installed Awesome inside Manjaro. Uh, this is in a virtual machine too, by the way. Uh, this is a VM. Uh, this top bar at the top is actually my uh, Qtile panel on my host machine that's running Lubuntu. But uh, starting here at the, the black bar here with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is actually the VM that Awesome is in. To install Awesome um, in Debian and Ubuntu and Debian and Ubuntu based distros, sudo apt install Awesome. For those of you that are running Arch based distros, obviously sudo pacman dash capital S Awesome. Awesome out of the box. This is very much vanilla awesome. I've done no configuring. This is how it, when you first install it, in this case inside Manjaro, you have this awesome background, this awesome wallpaper. You have a right click menu. There is really nothing in this right click menu. Uh, basically, it links to some config stuff. It restarts awesome. It quits awesome. And you have a link to open a terminal. And that is it. At the top, you have this same menu. The awesome logo here launches that same menu. But we're not going to be doing much with a right click menu uh, here in awesome. And we're not really going to play much with this menu here in the panel. As a matter of fact, if I was configuring this, I probably would just remove that menu system from the panel anyway. It serves no purpose for the most part in a tiling window manager. A tiling window manager, you're not going to be clicking on anything. You pretty much keeping your hands on the keyboard, you're doing everything with key bindings. So out of the box, uh, for most tiling window managers, and awesome is no exception, the super key, the windows key, plus enter on the keyboard should launch the terminal. And that is the case here in awesome. If I hit super enter again, I get a second terminal. Super enter again, of course, a third terminal, and so forth and so on. If I want to cycle through the layouts here, Super and Tab, I believe, cycle through the layouts. No, it actually cycles through the uh, open windows. So what cycles through the layouts? Is it Super Spacebar? Yeah, Super Spacebar. It's been a while since I've used Awesome, and I really didn't do much research into this. I, I really wanted to come at this kind of fresh today. Somebody that hasn't used Awesome in, in a number of years. I did live in it for a few months at one point, but... Super Spacebar is the default key binding to cycle through your layouts. Here are some of the default layouts. Of course, that looks like a max screen kind of layout. Of course, this is a floating layout, it appears. And back to the standard kind of layout. And we actually do have some window bordering here. For our terminal, I'm not sure why we have that, especially once we end up going to some of the tiling layouts. Uh, Super Shift C should close these windows. Super Shift C, C, C. Now let me open the terminal again now that we're on a tiling format rather than the floating format or for, uh, layout. Yeah, it's still giving us borders around the, uh, around the windows. It's still giving us a title bar and window decorations, you know, a close button and all of that. That's probably something in the awesome config file. We're going to take a look at the default awesome config here in a minute. But I probably would remove that out of the, out of you know, if we can change that in the config. There's no reason. To, this is wasted space. This title bar with these uh, 
these buttons, window decorations here. In a tiling window manager, you really don't want any of anything like that because you're not going to be clicking on anything anyway. Again, you do everything with key bindings. If you want to switch from tiling to floating, you do that with a key binding. If you want to close a program, you do it with a key binding. You want to switch to full screen, you do it with a key binding. We don't really need this bar here. So uh, where is the default config? located for the awesome window manager well by default it is located in your home folder in a hidden folder called dot config let me open a graphical file manager to show you guys i know a lot of times i like to do this stuff in the terminal and some of you guys complain so let me open pc man fm i know it's already installed here so this is my home folder in my home folder I have a dot config file. This is a hidden directory. It's hidden because it starts with a dot. It normally doesn't show unless you uh, set your file manager to show hidden files and directories. But anyway, go into this dot config file. In this dot config file, or excuse me, folder, dot config folder, you should have a awesome folder here. I don't have one. So what do I need to do? I need to create it. So I'm going to create new folder and I'm going to type awesome and now we have dot config slash awesome this is where our awesome configs should be located but they're not they're not here yet we need to find where awesome when you first install it puts its default configs so in the terminal I'm going to type locate awesome and see if I can figure out in the stuff that is returned what is the default config for awesome if I remember correctly it's been a, a while since I've used it but it is in slash Etsy I believe yep slash Etsy slash XDG slash awesome slash RC dot Lua that is the default awesome config we need to copy that so I'm actually just gonna highlight it since I've got my mouse on it already and middle click on the mouse copies it see how all of a sudden it just pasted that right into the shell here and I'm going to copy that file and then we need to uh, type the location where we want to copy that file to so dot config slash awesome and right here now we have RC dot Lua if I open this mm, getting a text message sorry guys uh, yeah, and this is our dot config or our RC dot Lua. This is the awesome window manager config file. I don't like the colors here. Uh, let me open up a different text editor, see if I can get the font a little bigger and some more appropriate coloring. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm opening a, opening a, a different text editor. Uh, Leafpad, that dark theme in Leafpad made the text kind of unreadable. So I went ahead and switched over to the Genie text editor. I had had it already installed and I zoomed in on the font too so you could see what's going on this is the config file this is the rc.lua file so this is awesome's config file uh, I am not a Lua programmer so you won't see me do too much in this config today that's not really going to be a Lua tutorial mainly this is just an overview to show you a little bit about awesome window manager uh, when actually when I tinker around with it here later in the video, what I'm gonna probably probably end up doing is just borrowing somebody else's config file. Um, that's usually the best way for new users to do this anyway is to go get somebody else's config file rather than trying to write your own. Because unless you are a serious programmer and actually know some Lua, you're not writing your own RC.Lua file. All right, this uh, rc.lua, this is, again, this is the awesome window manager config file. Here at the top, it's basically just importing some Lua libraries that you need. Um, moving a little further down the list, mod key. Mod key equals mod4. That is basically setting the mod key to the super key on your keyboard, the Windows key. If you wanted to, instead of using the super key for all your key bindings, if you wanted to use alt for your mod key, you would change mod key to mod one. I actually like the super key as my mod key, so I'm gonna leave it as mod key equals mod mod four. All right, then the next thing is, you see these two dashes and then 
the text that follows. This is called a comment. This is actually not part of the program. This is ignored by Awesome Window Manager. This is just whoever wrote this file is letting us know, hey, the next part of uh, this config file is the table of layouts to cover with awful.layout.inc order matters. What does that mean? This is our layouts. At the top of the panel where we did the uh, different layouts for tiling, of course they all look the same now because I've only got one window open, but we just cycled through all these layouts. Floating tile, tile left, tile bottom, tile top, fair, fair horizontal, spiral, yada yada yada. Now, if you want to add certain layouts, if there's other layouts available, custom layouts maybe you write, you can add different layouts. Or if you want to delete some of these layouts, for example, this is way, way too many layouts for most people. For most people that run tiling window managers, basically you want some kind of uh, two pane stacking layout usually, or maybe like a grid layout, you know, a four quadrant layout. And of course you need a max layout, a full screen layout for something like your web browser. And you need a floating layout. You usually are not going to use more than about four or five layouts. So having 12 or 15 or whatever in this list, uh, you would get rid of most of these. Most of these you wouldn't ever use. Moving a little further down the config, uh, got helper functions. I'm not sure exactly what this does. Uh, then we have menu. Again, they left us this comment here. This is a menu. So this is our right click menu when we right clicked on the desktop and we had that little menu or when we click on the awesome icon here in the panel, we got that same menu. This is that menu. And by the way, there are programs that will populate that menu with all of your programs that are installed on your system. I know for sure that in Debian and Debian based distros, there's stuff like that available that, uh, scripts that can populate that menu for you, that right click menu. Again, you really shouldn't be using a right click menu in a tiling window manager anyway, because in a tiling window manager, most of the time there's not going to be a desktop for you to click on. When you open a window, it's full screen. When you open a second window, it takes up half the screen. The first window takes up half the screen. There's no open space on your desktop to be right clicking on anyway. But it's out there for those of you that need it. Uh, you can get stuff that will set up that menu for you if you want a right click menu. Uh, further down the config, menu bar configuration, keyboard map indicator and switcher. Oh, uh, see, Y bar, what is this? This is the text clock widget, so I guess this is our uh, time and date here in the bar in the panel. Moving a little further down the config, we have some uh, wallpaper stuff. I guess this line here sets our wallpaper, that default awesome wallpaper. And a little further down the, the screen here. Well, each screen has its own tag table, one through nine. So this is our workspaces here. Let me get rid of that menu. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we wanted to rename them, Say, so give them actual names instead of numbers. You know what? I'll just do this. I'll just type one, two, three, and I'll just leave it at that for now, but you get the idea. Let's see, to restart Awesome Window Manager, I'm just taking a guess, Super Shift R? Mm -mm, that's not it. Super Control R. Okay, that was it. And now instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers, I actually have written out one, two, three. So you can rename these uh, workspaces, whatever you want to rename them. I don't actually know if they actually call these workspaces an awesome window manager. I'm not sure what lingo they use. They may be calling these tags because it says each screen has its own tag table. Okay, well that's interesting. If, I, if I'm understanding this correctly, I have a three monitor system. I'm only viewing this on one monitor in a VM right now, but if I was actually installing awesome on my system this is interesting because how it handles multi-monitor uh, layouts is a little different than two other tiling managers that i'm i'm used to xmonad and qtile the way they handle multi-monitors is very very cool if you have nine workspaces in xmonad or qtile monitor one is the first workspace monitor two is the third as is the second, excuse me, monitor three is the third, and four through nine are not being used. But if I switch, say, monitor two, which is on workspace two, to workspace nine, 
Now it's on nine, two's not being used, et cetera, et cetera. So each screen is one workspace. The way Awesome is set up, if I'm reading this correctly, is each screen has its own tag table, which means monitor one has tags one through nine, its own group. Monitor two has tags one through nine, its own group. Tag one on monitor one is not the same as tag one on monitor two and monitor three. So I would end up having 27 workspaces if, if I'm understanding that correctly. Nine on one, nine on two, nine on three. I don't like that. I, I actually prefer the way Xmonad handles multi-monitors. Uh, and I, I really think Xmonad really gets the multi-monitor situation right. So that's a, that's a downside for me personally, why I might not would live in awesome window manager. I've gotten used to, to the way Xmonad and Qtile handle multi-monitors. They both handle it the same way. Each screen is its own workspace. All right, further down the config, uh, we have some widgets. I'm assuming this is the widgets in the panel. Some mouse binding stuff. I'm not gonna edit any of this stuff. Layout manipulation right here. So mod key, the super key, shift and J. Awful client swap. Let's see what that does. Let me open up another window. So I'm gonna open up a terminal. Uh, super key, enter, opens a terminal. Uh, let's go to a different layout here. Can I get... Okay, why are we not tiling? Anyway, let me open up two terminals. I'm not sure why I couldn't get that to tile, but now I'm in a proper tiling layout. Super Shift and J cycles through the windows. Okay, let me open up HTOP to better display this. Now I have HTOP open on that. Let's see, do I have the Ranger File Manager? Yep. So now I have two programs, HTOP and the Ranger File Manager. Super Shift J swaps the windows. Super Shift K also swaps them in a different a kind of vertical instead of horizontal. Does that make sense? So actually it's using the Vim keys. Super Shift H, Super Shift J, Super Shift K, Super Shift L, and then Super Shift C and C to close. So it's using the Vim keys to do some of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close that VM out with that vanilla install of the Awesome Window Manager. For sake of time, what I'm going to do is show you a already pre-configured Awesome Window Manager session. Out of the box, Arco Linux comes with a beautiful, beautiful Awesome Window Manager session already set up for you. Let me, uh, let me get myself out of the way here has this conky on the desktop. I would probably probably remove that. There's no point in putting a conky on the desktop. Uh, it's here because when you first install Arco and Awesome Window Manager, you probably won't know what the key bindings are. So it's that's why that's here. But as you get comfortable with Awesome, you probably need to remove this conky from the desktop because you're never going to see it. As soon as you open a window, you know, it's hiding that conky. So this is a terminal. You got some transparency set in the terminal here. It's pretty cool. Oh, let me close. See if I remember how to close the windows here. No, I don't. So I'll, I'm actually going to look at his uh, conky here and see what he's got for closing a window. Let's see. Stop application is Super Shift Q. So Super and Enter to open the terminal. Super Shift Q. Okay. Well, now I know how to uh, how to close a program at least. Let me show you. Uh, Eric Dubois' awesome window manager config here for Arch Merge, now Arco Linux. Let's see if I can pull up Genie. So, uh, actually, I'm not exactly sure what I, I got into there. You know what? I'm going to right click on the desktop because he actually already has populated this right click menu for us here. <laughs> Genie is installed. But I don't know some of the key bindings for his config, so I'm actually going to look at what he has done here. I really like the uh, color scheme he's got for Genie, too. But 
that's not the point of this video. Let's take a look at his awesome config. So again, at the top we have various uh, libraries that have been installed and imported. Uh, some of the ones of note that are in his config that are not in the default config. I don't think lane was installed in the default config, nor was free desktop. I didn't see that one there. I did see naughty and beautiful. Those were already in the config. Moving a little further down his really massive config file too. I can, you know, for, let me just really scroll th very quickly through this. This is a very, very long rc.lua file. So uh, Eric, Eric Dubois spent some time on this. Uh, Key bindings, mod key equals mod 4, alt key, mod 1, mod key 1 is control, and he's got browser, browser 1, browser 2, browser 3, Vivaldi, Firefox, Chromium. He's got his editor set to nano. If I wanted to, I like Vim, I could change that to, now my default editor is Vim in this uh, awesome window manager session. Editor GUI. His default GUI editor is Atom. I don't like Atom. It's an Electron app. If I wanted a GUI editor, you know what? Genie is installed, and I like Genie. File manager. Uh, Eric Dubois had Thunar set as the file manager. You know what? I like PC Man FM. I'm not sure if it's installed here, so I better put Thunar back for now. But I could change it if I wished. Mail client, the default mail client's evolution. I use Thunderbird, so I would change that. And so forth and so on. All right. His tag names. Uh, one, two, three, four, five at the top. He's got them, you know, this weird uh, character with basically a circle with the number in it. That's actually pretty neat. I, I kind of like that. That's pretty sharp. Yeah, I probably wouldn't change that. That's classy right there. But if I wanted to, I could use these various symbols as my tag names, or I could use actual words as my tag names. Basically, I just comment out this line and uncomment out, say, this line here. Save the file, the rc.lua, restart, awesome. And, well, how do I restart awesome? Hmm. Super Shift R. Yep, Super Shift R. And now you see my tag names are these weird symbols here. I actually preferred the other way though. So I'm going to go back and uncomment that line and get the uh, circles with the numbers in it back. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool there. I can deal with that. Uh, taking a look further down his config. I have no idea what some of this stuff is. This is a really, really long config file, too. Uh, this is setting the wallpaper here. Uh, mouse bindings, again, I'm, I'm not sure if he edited that in any way. Key bindings, though. There are a lot of key bindings here. So he added key bindings for all of his important programs, such as, you know, the browser, the editor, Inkscape, GIMP, Meld, VLC, VirtualBox, his media player, Rofi, which is a run command prompt. Uh, Pulse Audio Control is here. OB Logout, which is a, a session menu to uh, log out, reboot, hibernate, that sort of thing. Anyway, this is really cool. You guys that are interested in, uh, in getting into Awesome Window Manager and want an easy way to get into it, well, you have to install Arco Linux, which the install for Arco Linux isn't like the most user-friendly install. But it's not bad. It's not bad. It does. It's time consuming because most of the programs you're installing are from the AUR. So you're compiling stuff from source. Uh, I, I want to say the last time I did a Arco Linux install for Awesome because I did it on the channel. It took a little over an hour, hour, maybe an hour and a half to run through all the scripts that you have to to run in the terminal. I've got a video on how to install Arco Linux, the Awesome Window Manager edition. But you guys that are interested in it. This is really neat. Of course, he's got the uh, widgets here in the panel. Like if I hover over the, the uh, date, we get a calendar pop up. This is really, really neat. Any other widgets? Yeah, we have a weather widget. So this is why his uh, config file is so massive. He's got a lot of stuff going on here, but pretty cool. Anyway, that's uh, my very brief look at Awesome Window Manager. I've been needing to take a look at this for about three weeks now. I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to the Obscure Window Manager project. There's just so many other things that 
I've been wanting to do. Uh, you know, of course, we got distro reviews, app reviews, you know, things in the news. Occasionally, I appear on other people's YouTube channels. Occasionally, I do the Big Daddy Linux podcast with those guys. Um, I did a, a rather lengthy show one night with uh, Toss, Total OS Today, recently, when he had his little six-hour marathon about a week ago, celebrating his eighth anniversary, eighth anniversary doing his channel. That was really cool. So... I've got a ton of stuff I need to eventually get around to doing on this channel. Uh, I still have got four more obscure window managers I've got to get through. I've got to get through Herbs, i3, Ice Window Manager, and Fluxbox. Of course, this month is going to be crazy busy with all the uh, Ubuntu 18.04 releases. And then, of course, May Fedora is having its big release. A lot of stuff coming up. Uh, you know, so many projects, so little time. But before I go, one thing I want to do is I want to do a special thanks to all my patrons. Ron, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Mark, Christian, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Kevin, Bob, and Darkwin. You guys are awesome. Just like the awesome window manager, you guys are awesome. You guys help support this channel. Peace.